Um, this is from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 11. For this very reason, you must make every effort to support your faith with goodness and goodness, with knowledge and knowledge, with self-control and self-control, with endurance and endurance, with godliness and godliness, with mutual affection and mutual affection, with love. For if these things are yours and are increasing among you, they keep you from being ineffective and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For anyone who lacks these things is short-sighted and blind, and is forgetful of the cleansing of past sins. Therefore, brothers and sisters, be all the more eager to confirm your call and election. For if you do this, you will never stumble. For in this way, entry into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be richly provided for you. Boy Scouts is one of the many organizations that's uh, known as character building. And that's absolutely true. I didn't share this in the first service, but uh, I'm, I'm a member of Boy Scout Troop 266. I can't remember what I did yesterday, but I can remember 50 years ago, 266. Can you relate to that? Yeah. Building character, and that's true. But they're not the only organization that builds character. And, and I know that this change in terminology that occurred the first of this month is going to take me more than 17 days to get it straight. Okay, so in my mind, there's Boy Scouts and there's Girl Scouts and there's Campfire and, and there's 4-H and there's Rotary Club and all just on and on and on. As you get older, it doesn't matter. You, there's groups and organizations there to help you, among other things, build character. Now, the church also, I would like to think, can help build character. So I just want to spend some time this morning thinking about what, what do we mean when we, when we talk about character. I think we know it when we see it. We know it when it's missing. We know that there's all sorts of headlines nowadays filled about a person who does or does not have character. And, and, and it's really confusing. It seems as if bad character has no boundaries, but it's also true that if that is true, then it's also true that good character has no boundaries either. And good character is exemplified every day and, and too often goes unnoticed. I spent a lot of time trying to find some pithy little expression of what character is and what it might be. And, and the one that I found that was the best is one that so many of you remember and, and have brought to my attention. Someone once said, character is what we do when we think no one is looking. Right? Character is what we do when, no one, when we think that no one is looking. Character, when you go back to what the word, uh, back to the, the, the Greek root of that, it has to do with the idea of having something engraved, an engraved mark. And when we think about character, that engraved mark it is us. It's who we are, what we do, how we do it, why we do it. It's how we, how we recover when things go really, really well, or maybe when things don't go to our liking. Character is developed through time. It doesn't matter how young you may be or how old you may be. Character continually develops in your life. Or more accurately, it's developed when, through our experiences and, and what we choose to learn from those experiences. Our scripture this morning is from 2 Peter. And 2 Peter is a, a particular book that I don't particularly preach from too terribly often, but it was appropriate today. Because you see, in 2 Peter, the apostle Peter, the one who says the word of Jesus, I'll never ever deny you, I'll never, you know, and did it within just a few hours. A spectacular and epic fail. Peter is writing, and, and his concern is, is about people who are coming into the worshiping community and coming into the community at large and teaching things that are not quite right. Things that will ultimately harm the community and harm the worshiping community and harm individuals. He was trying to, very hard in, in Second Peter to present this idea that to present this, what to him is a, just an obvious fact that, that this present life that we live in points to something out in the future. And that, what he points out in the future, gives meaning 
to life today. And then he goes on to give a big long list. I'm kind of ambivalent sometimes about lists when I see them in the Bible, but they're important. And this one's important as well. And he gives this list because people have been leading other people astray. And at 2 Peter verse, chapter 2, verse 15, he says that these false teachers, as he calls them, they, have been, they are leaving the straight path and they have gone off course. So if maybe we've gone off course, maybe we need some correction, right? See, Peter gives this list because he thinks that it's important for us, not just down the road in, in some future time, but also important right here and right now. He gives a, several characteristics, and they begin with faith in Jesus Christ, and they end with this idea of, of what love is. He says that we... That if we're going to be on the right path, if we're going to be men and women of character, if we're going to live a life now that has meaning and purpose now and will store up for us treasures down through eternity, that we need to have faith. And then we need to have goodness and knowledge and self-control and endurance and godliness and mutual affection and love. And if you're interested, you can go and look and unpack what all those things mean. What they mean is if you really spend time with it, and these are put in order intentionally, and they build upon one another, and if you do that, and you do that, and you keep at it, and you keep at it, and you keep at it, and you're gentle with yourself when you make mistakes, and you learn from things, whether they're mountaintop experiences, or whether they're just, just really hard, and you learn from them, you end up having character. Good conduct that springs from a noble heart is how one person over a hundred years spoke of it. Because you see, character is a product of judgment, of discernment, of choice that comes when you and I have a certain amount of freedom to make choices about what's good and what's evil and what's appropriate and what's not. A decision that's forced and coerced isn't a moral judgment. It's not a decision made out of character. It's only, it's only your character shows when you, when you make choices that are right and you, you abide by them. When you have that mark that you know about if no one else does. It's what motivates us to make those right decisions. Character is what we learn from our lives. And what we learn from our lives sometimes is not the easiest thing. When I stop to think about what it is that makes character, I come away somewhat disheartened, I guess is the right word, because it's not easy doing the right thing for the right reason. Helen Keller said, a character cannot be developed in ease and quiet only through experience of trial and suffering. Can the soul be strengthened, ambition inspired, and success achieved? If anybody should know how, what it is to, to overcome things that were not of your own making, that would be Helen Keller. Sometimes I think one part of character is learning who to listen to and who not to listen to. When I was sharing with people that I was going to be talking about character today, they, I don't know, several of them said, oh my gosh, that's, uh, why is it that it's always the difficult things that make character? Do you know what I'm talking about? Of course you do. I grew up on a farm and had, I had chores to do. And I didn't, rem I didn't mind the afternoon chores all that much. I really didn't. Winter, summer, I, it didn't matter afternoon, but I absolutely, in winter time, I absolutely hated the morning chores because you're, you wake up and you're in bed and you got all the blankets and things up over you, you're doing fine, everything's wonderful, and, and 10 minutes later I'm dressed and out in the darkness and the, the black and the cold weather and freezing weather like we've had the past few weeks, and I'm feeding the hogs. And I don't want to feed hogs at 6.30 in the morning when it's 20 below or maybe not that cold, but you know what I'm saying. 
And I kept hearing my dad say, ah, oh, it builds character, it builds character. Yeah. I remember cleaning the chicken coop the first time. Builds character. I stunk and, and smelled and was sick for days. By the way, I learned after that to wear the mask thing. That's, oh, it builds character. It does seem like it's the things that are challenging that build character. Maybe that's, maybe that's accurate. It's not difficult for any of us to think about those times where we were disappointed in ourselves, where we've been disappointed with somebody else, when we've endured a horrible, horrible loss and a catastrophe that should not happen to anybody, when we try, or maybe, maybe it's something more on the positive side, when we have a, a civil, respectful debate or conversation with, with one another, when we learn how to solve a problem, when we just get through parenting and parenting and we can get to that point and go you know what like somebody said to me the other day you know what I really did okay with my kids they're adults they're productive citizens they are good people I must have done something right but then there's a times that it feel less than satisfied and less than complete it's all a part of learning who you are and, and learning what that mark and that scratch and that identification that you carry with you all the time, what that really truly is. A few days ago on television, I was watching this program on one of the church channels, and, and this fellow was being, being interviewed by the host of that program, and he starts talking about all the things that have happened in his life, and he's a young man, a relatively young man, and uh, he was talking about where he was born, his parents were missionaries, and he got sent to a, to a school when he was very young, because the, his parents, the, the higher-ups and the mission board said that this was be, would be best for me, and he said it wasn't best for me, and he went on and talked about how he processed all that and a whole bunch of other things. And the first thing that he said that caught my attention was this. He says, we all live in our story. Now, those of you who have been around me enough to know that I'm a firm believer in, our, uh, in each and every person's story, that I try very hard to listen to your story. And as you listen to what I share with mine, we all live in our story. So why is it so hard to admit certain parts of, of our story? How... how why is it so hard to admit that we, are, we have been wounded at times and we've been uh, just, we have done things to ourselves that are not right. We have made decisions that have, have adversely affected people we love and people we don't even know in, in, bad, in difficult ways. Why is it so hard to admit our failures and shortcomings? If that's where our character is developed and if that's where our, our, our lives are, you know, spring out of, why is it so difficult? Well, the fellow that said that also said something else that jumped out at me. As he was talking about all these, these certain things that happened to him and how he had spent some time reflecting upon them and thinking about them and praying and reading scripture and doing, attending worship and doing all these sort of things, he finally come to said, you know, I'm, I'm not sure he used these exact words, but he said something to the effect, I'm really at a good place. Then he says, because everything is a beautiful thing titled the sermon. Everything is a beautiful thing. I want to make a couple of points, a couple of things for you to consider here. I want to be understood and I want to be as, as clear as I can be about this topic of building character and having it built in your life. I don't think I'm going to disagree with them that we all live in our story and that everything is a beautiful thing, but I think we need to say not everything that ever happens to us needs to have a joy blanket thrown over it. You know what I'm talking about. There's some people you meet, and they're, no matter what happens, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry that this and this and that. And that. Oh, it's all good. Praise the Lord. It's great and wonderful. I, I'm doing good. Well, maybe. But I've learned something in those difficult times in my life. I've learned that that's, if that's really, truly where you're at. That's fine. But I don't have to pretend that everything's okay when everything's not okay. 
that I can be honest with Jesus in my prayers and in my thoughts and in my reflections because Jesus is going to be honest back with me. Lament is a real and, and yet un, underappreciated part of Scripture. Lament is where you express all the hurt and the pain that's in your life and you express it to, to God or to Jesus, to whoever it may be, and, and, you, and you are honest with them. Lament is a real thing. We, there are psalms of lament. Jesus had certain places in his ministry where he lamented what, what he saw going on around him. His heart broke. He shed tears when his friend Lazarus died. We don't have to say to God for the sake of building character. I'm glad that whatever the most difficult thing in your life is, whatever it is, I'm glad that that happened. It's because it's made me who I am today. Some of you know our story. I don't have to say that my son, my youngest son's car accident and his death was a good thing. I don't have to say that it's okay that Craig died. I don't have to say that it hasn't hurt me to the core. I don't have to say that it's right. I don't ever have to say that. And you know what? Jesus knows that. Jesus knows that. In fact, one, one time when I was just really thinking about this and, and just things going to my head, I heard that familiar voice in my head. I know it to be God speaking to me. And you know what he said that particular day? I'm a brief father too. I don't have to say it's okay. But I can learn from it. And I can grow from it. And I can be the person that God wants me to be. I can have that kind of character because of what's happened to me. You can have that kind of character that, based upon whatever catastrophic events ever occurred in your life because that's what God through Christ wants. First Thessalonians, it says in chapter 5, verse 18, it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do you hear what that says, that first part? It says, Give thanks in all circumstances. This was a powerful piece of scripture for me when I really understood it. It doesn't say that to give thanks for all the circumstances of your life. Stay connected with God, in other words. Stay connected to Christ Jesus. And that character will develop. It will be unique and as, as individual as you are. And that's what God, through Christ, wants for you. Our verses from 2 Peter tell us that the power of Jesus gives everything that we need to live a godly life. Second thing I want to share with you this morning and is that character or lack of character is not a weapon for us to use against one another. Why do we not share? Why do we not think about these things that happened to us and how we have grown from them? How come we don't share them? Because we live in a time and a place where that will get you clobbered. And you know what I mean by that. I don't know who's right or who's wrong, but I know that, that all of us have done things and said things and, and behaved in ways when we were... 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, you know, whatever age that we're so embarrassed about now. But we live in a time and a place where we talk about these things. There's nobody that asks, have you grown from it? Have you learned from it? Have you, are you a different? Okay, when you did that over here, that's one thing. But are you a different person now? And, and, and nobody cares to look past the perceived injustice or the actual injustice. I'm going to, I had something happen to me last week that is so unusual. I actually had a conversation on Facebook, on social media. A conversation. Can you believe that? A person that I'd gone through elementary school and high school together and, and post things that I just thoroughly disagree with and, and, and posted a, a picture of some graphic that had been borrowed from someplace else on the internet and it had a picture of Ted Danson the actor and a black face and then at the bottom of it was some snarly thing well I guess you know he doesn't we, we, we should, you know I thought about that for a second and I couldn't help myself I went in next and told Lane Lane you, uh, you're, you know what I just did and she said oh no <laughs> because Facebook let's get real social 
media is not designed for conversation. Might have been intended that way, but that's not the way it goes anymore. I came back and I said, am I missing something here? Because Ted Danson is not a politician, and Ted Danson is not making decisions that affect me and my children and my grandchildren. Am I missing something here? And this person came back to me and started sharing what was really on their heart. And what was really on their heart was this. I have done things that, that if I was to share those right now, I would be just, I would get all this verbal attack. I've done things that I'm not proud of. So we had a conversation. That's not right, is it? That's not going to get us anywhere as an individual, as a congregation, or as a community, or as a nation. And the remedy there is to show peace. To show grace, rather. To show grace. God has given us all that we need to become spiritually mature. And God has provided the ability to live a life that pleases God. And our list of characteristics that I just didn't really spend a lot of time with this morning is, is a starting point. To learn how to grow in, in faith. To acknowledge that when we have some amazing things happen to us, to give Christ the, the glory and the, and the praise. But also to know that, that when things are not the best, that we can say, be honest in our conversation with Jesus. Our list began with faith in, in Jesus Christ. And it ended up with all the ups and downs, but it ended up with the, the attribute of love. Agape love, sacrificial love, things, love that, that is more concerned about the other person than themselves. Peter in another place, not in our scriptures that we read this morning, but another place says this. Above all, he says, maintain constant love for one another. For love covers a multitude of sins. Amen.